I love the smell of indictments in the morning. It smells like, it smells like hope. Yeah, happy Mueller Monday. So I started the video and uh, my phone rang and it was my doctor um, telling me that I'm anemic. <laughs> Gotta deal with that. Vegans and vegetarians, you get you your regular blood work done. See? Mom's dare. Oh, for Katie, as opposed to my skeptical atheist face. <laughs> um, that's a retreat in joke between Katie and me. So, sorry about that. Anyway, the retreat. The retreat, the retreat was lovely. Um, I want to thank... I want to thank Emily C. and Orietta for contacting me privately to make sure that I was going to be doing okay because my anxiety was apparently palpable um, but thank you both so much I'm okay um, retreat was a success happy about that um, sorry I've got piles <laughs> of stuff um, so I want to say, I can't say enough good things about the Hilton Garden Inn, um, in, in Austin where we stayed. Um, there were some issues and they have all been made right. Um, the air conditioner, there was, there's really nothing for it. Um, next time, you know, like I'm sure the next, um, event they have in that particular conference room will be better. Um, apparently the building's uh, physical plant engineer quit the week before the retreat and so there was a lot of miscommunication going on and I'm really sorry about that because the room was being heated very cooled I'm sorry cooled very unevenly. Um, so like half the room was really hot and the end of the room that I was sitting on was like freezing because they had brought in this big fan because they couldn't actually figure out how to use the control panels on the wall. Um, that's not really anybody's fault other than the person who quit and apparently dropped the ball and didn't let anyone know that there was a ball to pick up. Um, Issues with the staff. Um, the front desk staff apparently had only been there for about a month and uh, my contact there, Lauren, said clearly they need more training, like, like event training. Um, so they're going to get that. Um, the employee who was creeping on one of our attenders is either fired or having some really, really, really intensive sexual harassment training. If you didn't notice it, you didn't notice it. I was made aware of it and I came down on it like a ton of bricks because I don't put up with that bullshit. Can't say enough good things. I mean, they made it right. I said, issue, 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 and they made it right to the best of their ability. Um, as far as planning the retreat, they were a joy to work with. Uh, the next time I do Floss Tube 2018, I'm preferentially going to look for a Hilton Garden. So, yay. And yes, there will be a Floss Tube Retreat 2018. Um, Canadians, I think you'll be very happy. That's all I'm going to say. Um, folks in the United States, I'm sorry if you're going to be disappointed. Um, this continent we live on is huge. I cannot please everyone. So I've decided to just stop trying to please everyone and do what I can. And so far that's working out pretty well. But thank you to everyone who showed up and supported. We raised $550 for Peninsula Friends of Animals. 
um, in honor of Beverly Avenger and stitchers are amazing. And if you want to, if you didn't make it to the retreat, but you would like to kick Peninsula Friends of Animals some cash, even if it's just like, you know, you skip your pumpkin spice latte for one day this week and send them that, that's totally cool. I'll put their link below. You can PayPal it, you can mail them a check, you can mail them cash, little note. Cool. Um, looking at my notes. Um, I've gotten kind of an influx of new subscribers the past couple of weeks. Hello. Thank you. Welcome. I make videos every so often. Uh, and thanks to the folks who apparently were talking me up in your floss tube videos to send folks over here. I really do. I, I appreciate you. You folks who keep coming back a lot. Uh, that's it. Halloween's tomorrow. Yay. Speaking of, we were, my family and I were at Target the other week and we ran into one of Pepe's cousins and she came home with us. This is Pepper. She's not going to be a permanent fixture around the house, but she'll come out for Halloween. We're going to put her outside tomorrow night. But yeah, so Pepper's sitting here in a chair beside me. I don't think I can squeeze her into the frame. Amelia decided that she was called Pepper. So. All right, I'm just going to... I got some lovely gifts at the retreat while I'm here. Brittany, Blimey Cat of Ingleside Imaginarium, made me as a thank you one of her adorable little animal pin cushions. And I feel like she had, she had asked me what my favorite animal was. And I told her the animal that steals my heart every time. But I felt bad about it, and I said, but I do have two cats, I'm trying to give her sort of an easy out. No, it's Brittany, she's awesome. She decided she was gonna make me a tiny manatee, so she made me a tiny manatee. <laughs> and I love her so much. It's shameful, she doesn't have a name yet. It's shameful. But I love her so much. She's got a little manatee face, and she's got a little manatee tail. Yeah. So that's my new stitchy buddy. And let's see, Kate had someone make everyone a collapsible cloth or catcher. And no name needle mind, you know, Kate's business, no name needle minders. Everybody got a couple of needle minders. Thank you to oh Linda and, oh no, oh no, your names are gone. I can see your faces, I can see your faces and you're trying to get a stitching supplies business off the ground and I will either put something down here or link it below, well I'll definitely link it below. You made everybody reach. Ugh. I got this cool grime guard for my 8x8 Q-snap. Love it. Love the colors. And uh, they, gave, they gave the dude a project bag. I got this one. It's got cool, like, sampler. Sampler patterned fabric. And, of course, the business card isn't here because I'm totally disorganized. I will put the information down here. And I can't believe that I blanked on your names. I'm so sorry. I, forgive me. Um, 
the past the stash table was off the chain um, and everything that was left went to a women's shelter. Um, Brittany was there selling cute little friends and Leslie from Under the Sea Fabrics was there with her, Leslie and her traveling LNS <laughs> was awesome. I'm gonna stop gushing because it'll just be me gushing the entire video and you want to probably see some stitching. So let's, let's get moving along with that stitching. Let's show you my whips. My main whips have not gotten much love. I had this, 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 this idea because I have a lot of things coming down the pike that I want to start. Um, plus a really huge new start that you're going to see. I had this thing with like, I have to finish things. I'm not doing stitch mania in 2018 if I don't get some finishes. Hard line. So I have two finishes. Um, one of them is actually mostly FFO'd. Um, if you'll remember my little Mill Hill I Love Stitching Kit, which was a Stitch Mania start, it's mostly FFO'd. I still need to back it with felt. But this is done. It's all beaded, all stitched, attached the little charm, attached the little hanger. Don't know where I'm going to put it, but it's done. And I'm happy. And I managed, I don't think I signed this yet, actually. I need to do that. Home by the Sea is done. So this was done on 32 count Haunted by Picture This Plus. Um, mostly DMC. I think I added for the red flowers. No, it's not mostly DMC. I lied. It's Weeks Dye Works. The greens are Weeks Dye Works. Two different Weeks Dye Works. And I can't remember which ones I used. Blue Spruce and um, Scuppernog, I think. And then um, the red flowers, one of them is DMC uh, 321, or maybe it's DMC 666. It's a DMC red and a ruby slipper from Jottery Designs. But everything else is DMC. So that just needs a signature. And I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. We'll see. What else am I working on? At the retreat, I worked on QS Ladybug. And I got almost a page finish at the retreat. And so when I got home, I did finish the page. So this is where we are now. Oh, and here's my floss tube retreat needle minder that Kate made. I got a green one. So this is 25 count from Jewelry Designs in Elden Wood. Uh, fabric is anchor black. I'm doing it two over one tent stitch. Really cool effect, especially from far away, I think. So that's the only one of my like main four whips that has gotten any love. I need to fix that this coming week. So do you remember um, in December, well, I wasn't making video, when I, when I came back from my little pre uh, post-election hiatus, I had uh, started stitching the Queen Anne's Lace Fairy by Nora Corbett. 
Um, but I hadn't bought the beads. Well, I bought the beads, and so I decided to start beading her, and now some of the beads aren't cooperating, and that's irritating. Oh, well. There are a lot of beads on this thing. So this is going to take a little while. But I started beading her. This is 32 count Bewitched, I think, from some fabric dyer. I forget. I have it written down somewhere. But all the stitching on her is done. And I started at the top. And I'm working my way down. And it occurred to me when I started beading that um, I apparently forgot to buy one of the other kinds of beads. So that will have to be a purchase at some point. So that's, that is something that's coming along. And I'm using the Nymo thread, and I'm actually really pleased with it. That is socks. You don't want to see those right now. That is a knitting book. You don't want to see that right now. I have also been working on Coffee Quaker. It's, I'm actually, it's not out of the Q-snap right now. There's not much going on with it. Well, actually there is. Um, so here's where it is on the Q-snap. So the words are all done. This motif, this motif, this motif, this motif. Did this and this. And I am totally just winging it with the colors. This is Silken Colors in Ginger Snap. This is Caramel Corn, gassed. This is Dried Thyme. This is chamomile. Is this molasses? Maybe. These are, this I think is dark chocolate, but I'm not sure. I'll have to pull it out. Um, this is done on a 36 count linen that I dyed myself with coffee and tea. So I think I'm gonna, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna finish out this thread and then I'm gonna put it away and maybe I'll pull out Nantucket Girl. Haven't played with Nantucket Girl in a while. So I think that's the plan there. Um, remember last time when I was talking about the big gecko rouge pattern? Well, I bought it, I bought the kit. And I started it. Nowhere near a page finish. This is going to get a lot of love and because I joined Full Coverage Fanatics and so I'll be working on this as much as I can. Um, as much as I can. So it's I'm doing it one over one full cross on 25 count. It's going to be huge, 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 my God. And that's what I have so far. Shout out to Pam of Pam's Crafty Corner for the Waste Knot tutorial, because that's what I've been using and it's working really well. Lots of gray. I think once I get down here, we're going to start seeing a lot of confetti. So. That's a full coverage piece started. And then in December, for full, full coverage fanatics, I'm going to start the Candleman. Which is a technically a story keep. It's kind of a weird, it's kind of a large shape for a story keep. But, um, here, do you want to see? This is the Gecko Rouge. This is what you just saw. And I'm right up here. So pretty soon I'm going to start this little corner of that. Yeah. Huge. Why? Because I love my partner, that's why. 
Okay. Plans. Do I have any plans? I don't know. Um, going to start Candleman in December. In January, I'm going to start, well, probably in December, actually, because that's when the pattern releases. I'm going to be doing the um, 2018 Ingleside Imaginarium Mystery Sal. I got a sneak peek of it at the retreat and I fell in love with it and I ordered some fabric for it. And so we'll see when that fabric gets here. Hopefully in time for me to get working on the border. If not, we'll deal with it, right? Right. Uh, what else? I I think those are my only big plans for new starts. Um, there are some things I'd really, I really, really want to start, but I'm not, I, I don't even own them yet, and I don't plan to anytime soon. Like, I really, really want to do Village of Hawk Run Hollow. Maybe if I'm very good and I get good progress and get some more finishes, I will start that for Stitch Mania. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But we'll see. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think if I do Stitch Mania at all, it's going to be little things. But that's, what, seven months down the pike? Not even going to think about that. Knitting! I finished... I finished my socks. These are socks for me. Lorna's Laces... Um, in orange creamsicle. Um, they were toe-up socks. Um, I don't particularly like toe-up socks, I have decided. I'll, I'll knit them, I just won't like it. It could also be that for socks, I am, uh, I use double-pointed needles, and it could be that for toe-ups, I should switch to the two circular needles method. Um, so that might be something to try actually the next time I want to do toe-ups because I, um, I had started a pair of socks for Stocktober and they're a give up. The pattern was very fiddly in an annoying way. It wasn't difficult. It was just annoying. And then I, I so I got the foot done and I started working up the leg and the the leg is huge compared to the foot and it's just I can't it, it, it's a give up um maybe if I had had more time but I was too busy working on the Coleridge poncho which is done I feel like I'm totally over the, all over the place today. And I'm sorry about that. It's, I don't know. Coleridge is done and I love it. And um, every time I wear it out of the house, someone compliments me. So good job, Anne. Uh, this is from the a uh, fall 2017 issue of Knit Filament Magazine, and you're going to be able to find it on Ravelry as an individual pattern, probably in a few months, um, but I will link the pattern below. This is knit um, in Blackwater Abbey Yarns worsted weight uh, in oatmeal. I knit size large, and the pattern said I would need six skeins of yarn. I used four. So I got two of these kicking around. Um, 
I kind of feel like I should have made it a little wider, but it's, so it's a poncho. Um, it's about waist length on me. It's supposed to be hip length. Um, this beautiful cable and textured lace pattern. It's longer in the back. It comes to a nice point. I really like the cowl neckline. Um, I'm going to be living in this. Um, I'm wearing a t-shirt today because I uh, originally was planning on doing the t-shirt and a flannel and then I decided, oh, if I'm going to make a floss tube video, I better put on my, I better put on my poncho. But yeah, our floss tube's own Ann P designed this. So I had fun. It only took me about a month of knitting um, on and off. If I didn't have other hobbies and other things, it probably would have done faster. I'm not the world's fastest knitter. What have you. I'm happy. I love it. What is it, Fitbit? I don't have time to give you 100 steps right now. I'm sorry. Um, so that's that. Nana's socks are officially done, but they're in the other room because I can't brain today. I cast on and am working on my Pap's hat, my grandfather's hat. I call him Pap because I grew up in central Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't grow up in a like, we, we drop the dish in my house, but I didn't, I don't address my parents and grandparents in Yiddish or Hebrew names. So, um, so this is the start of a hat. And yes, the brim is very wide. That's because it's going to be folded up. This is a, one of my favorite hats to knit. It comes from this book called Hats On. And... There's some good things in here, and I'm knitting the Aaron watch cap. I've knit this for Josh. I've knit this for my father-in-law. And I'm trying to find a picture. Okay, so it's done in a cream in the photo for the book. Um, so there, it's very textured. So there's cable and there's some seed stitch, and then there's just this plain stockinette with a garter ridge about every six rows. And it just, that repeats around with one by one twisted stitch ribbing. And I'm knitting this in Quince and Company Wren. They're worsted yarn. Um, this colorway is called Twig. And I think two skeins is going to be just about perfect. Very soft. I really like Quince and Company yarn, and I don't use it nearly as often as I would like. It's real, like it's very soft. The quality is great, and it's pretty cheap as far as wool goes. So that this will be a quick, a quickie. And then I have a, a big cowl I'm going to start for my sister um, that's going to be knit out of some deep stash. I have some alpaca, alpaca yarn in a nice blue, so that'll be fun. And I have some alpaca yarn that I bought at the farmer's market because Josh needs a new hat. So that's that's going to be most of my my holiday knitting. My grandparents were the big big winners this year as far as what got concentrated on. Um, but I will probably give little I, I, in in lieu of a hand knitted gift I I give out little knitting IOUs and then people just tell me what they want and I knit it. It works. It works. Um, knitting plans. So going into 2018, and I know it's a little early to talk about that, but I'm thinking about it anyway. Um, Ann P over at Wooly Wonka Fibers, 
and I'll link their Ravelry group below. Um, there's sort of a Wooly Wonka fibers knit along, craft along going on for, for 2018. Each month has a theme, has a, each month, so theme. Um, like say January is lace and uh, the color family is gray. And this is, there's a, I'm not explaining it well because Anne has already explained it and there's info on the Ravelry group, but each month has a theme and a color. So I thought this would be good for stash busting and also to get me knitting more. So for January, I know I'm going to be using the gray alpaca yarn that I spun during Tour de Fleece. Um, I'm thinking perhaps a cowl or perhaps some mitts. I have 200 yards. It's really going to depend. Um, so that'll be fun. I think that's going to dictate my knitting next year. Unless something just totally grabs me by the face and says, you must knit this now, which happens which happens. Um, spinning has been kind of a knot thing, which I need to get back into because I have a lot of fiber. When you join a fiber club, that happens. So that needs to get, get worked on too. It's one of those things, you know what, I just need to find a good audio book and plug it in and go. What can you do? All right, I'm gonna pause because I have to pee. You're welcome. One sec. I never got my glass of water. That's not my fault. I know. <laughs> I'm back <laughs> and I have a guest. Actually, I wanna give major props um, to my partner in crime and in life, Josh and his beard. Um, this dude is the unsung hero of the floss tube retreat. Um, when, <laughs> when I had low social spoons days, he talked to the hotel. When I was running around panicking in the weeks leading up to the, to the retreat, being like, they're all going to hate it and it's all going to be my fault and it's going to suck. This guy didn't be like, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> um, I did. <laughs> so major props to this guy for putting up with all of this mess for there ain't no mess. For <laughs> you're the one who invited me here, I'm gonna be parenthetical. <laughs> um he's gonna he's gonna help uh show off um now when Olivia V does this, because normally I just say it's time for haul. This is a few months in the making, so I think this has has actually this actually counts as haul uh, <laughs> Um, it does, it does. So let's start with what I got at the retreat, which you've seen. I was really good at the retreat. I, I, I bought two pieces of fabric and then I grabbed stuff from past the stash. I don't think that's the door. I no, think it's the cat. Uh. So this is uh, this is a piece of fabric number one. This is Iris from Leslie. Um, um, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta completely them see the pretty. This is a thirty. Is it thirty-two? I don't know. I'm just holding yeah. This it. is thirty-two <laughs> from Under the Sea Fabrics, and um, I got this originally with Brittany's Autumn Dragon in mind, but we'll see because there are some other fabrics here that might be better, but I like it. And then I got this giant piece of 36 count in brown sugar. And it's kind of a weird cut, but I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter that it's kind of a weird shape because this is going to be so versatile. I just kind of want to be like, do, 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 Very Tetris, yes. 
Um, but yeah, so this is brown sugar. I like it. It's a great neutral. And the modeling's really nice. Oh, hush. <laughs> modeling, not modeling. Oh, okay. Modeling. <laughs> <sighs> you went to a state school. I did. Uh, so that's the fabric I bought at the retreat. Um, what came home with me from the retreat, from the past the stash table, is I got this Just Cross Stitch magazine, mostly for this beautiful orange sampler on the front. This is the most recent. This is October 2017. But there are some other cute things. Oh, there's a really cute mushroom pattern in here that I think is going to have to get done. And um, then Garrett was very sweet and uh, let me swipe his, his Lizzie Kate spooked pack. thought I was modeling. If you want me modeling, I'm modeling. Yeah, Lizzie Kate spooked. You've seen it. Thank you, Garrett. And this was on Past the Stash, which uh, saved me from buying it. It's uh, last year's Halloween Stitchy Box pattern, the Quaker pumpkin I gotta hold up those because that's where I would say it looked like like a frowny face, like on the camera. Yeah, very oh, grouchy so face back there. Pumpkin. Careful, don't show the pattern. What? I didn't. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, maybe if they were like like had like uh, like uh, what's that show? CSI, like mm. enhanced. They could have seen like the one quarter of a second when I flipped <laughs> it over there, and they could have caught the murder in the bushes outside and the reflection off my eyes. Oh yeah. <laughs> So this, what the heck is this? This is from Fiberlicious. And now I can't, there's no tag. It's very blue. It is very blue. So I bought <clears throat> this pattern. You've seen it. And so I've been searching for the perfect fabric. I think this might be too cheery blue. What on, the heck is he doing over there? That's not the cat. It's the Halloween decoration <coughs> on the door. Oh, okay. This looks nice and moody on camera but it's actually a very cheery blue yeah it's very cerulean almost cerulean like a gentle breeze like like a bahaman beach <laughs> so we'll see oh hush <laughs> um and some very generous folks at the retreat gave me an etsy gift card <coughs> And so I finally decided I was going to see what all the x design hubbub was about. So I got three pieces of fabric. This is Spicy Carrot in a 36. I should have gotten a bigger piece of this stuff. This is a 32 count in Bloody Halloween. I should have gotten a bigger piece. Let's get that close but up. That's got some really isn't that cool? And then I got a 36 piece of gold sand. It looks kind of washed out. So the shipping, holy cow, crazy fast. From Hungary to the US, holy cow. It's really nice quality. Um, I'm looking forward to stitching on it. I don't have any plans for it yet, but um, I, I have, am slowly developing a tiny fabric stash now, which is good. And then last week I got that magical email, that magical email that said, your Christmas in July order from Picture This Plus shipped. And it's here. And I bought tiny pieces of fabric, but that's okay. They're all so beautiful. And they're all 32? Yeah. So this is Baroque. It's less Christmassy in person. It's very pale. It's almost rose rather than red. Yeah. It's rose and sage. What do you, what do you think? You seeing anything you like? <laughs> you know me. You don't get to complain about nothing with that gecko rouge pattern. I also don't get to complain about nothing with your stash when you ever, you compare it to my Lego collection. <laughs> I don't. This is murky um, because it's, I've been hearing Emily 
talk up murky so much I had to get a piece for myself. Um, it's pretty. I was expecting it, it's 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 a lot. There's a lot more of the dark color in this cut than I was expecting, but I I'm not complaining. It's nice. It's moody. I can work with this. Speaking of the Lego collection, that's going to... There, 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 there's going to be some more of that. Oh, there's going to be some more Legos? What they, is this? They, they reissued the Taj Mahal. Oh, this <laughs> is gingerbread. You know I had to. Anything fall colored, Indian food colored, had to. This is. Did I say this is all 32 count? Yes. It's all 32 count. Um, so the next one coming up is another, I think it might be too small though, but this is another contender for the, um, Voyage Out, the, the, the Cricut Collection one I just showed you. This is Tempest. This might be just a hair small for it though, but I like that. Oh, and this is one of my favorites. This is Eek. I think this might, be, I think this might be a little small for um, Lizzie Kate spooked, but I think it would look great mm. on this. Eek. And then last piece. See, is... I, I wish I would have thought earlier that I keep the air of mystery and only in my eyes at all times. Like Wilson. In. Uh, Don't ever compare me to a Tim Allen show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I won't ever do that again. This is Cauldron. <laughs> I like this too. This could, I don't know. I think the boy, the uh, Cricut collection might look okay on this too. Hmm. Maybe. We'll have to see. But that's the fabric. And then I just have two more patterns that I bought to fill up my cart because... You can't just buy one spool of thread. So this is Lavender and Lace's Evangeline. This is Emily's fault. I have decided, and I, uh, Diana assured me this is a good idea, and Garrett assured me that this is a good idea. I'm going to do a skin conversion um, and turn her into Marie Laveau. I'm gonna need some help with that though, because it's, I was talking to Diana, like I need to change her hair. Marie, Marie Laveau probably would have had her hair wrapped. That ain't happening anytime soon. And then I got this sampler from Plum Street Antiques. This is definitely Emily's fault. Emily, you're the boss of me. At least I want to, I think this is Emily's fault. This is uh, Anne Barson Lawborough, 1837. What's it say? Hark from the tomb a doleful sound, my ear attend to the cry. Ye living men come view the ground where you must shortly lie. Princess, this clay must be your bed in spite of all your towers. The tall, the wise, the reverend head must lie as low as ours. It's true. That's all the haul. Oh yeah, I was going to talk about books. Do you want to be here for books? I don't care one way or the other. <laughs> I was going to Google to see how to pronounce this guy's name. And then I forgot. Scandinavian vowels. You going? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Books. I'm still listening to um, my Pern audiobook. Um, I should finish that up. And, but it's good. Um, it's kind of hard to describe. It reminds one of, um... <laughs> I'll stop now. Oh, hell. <laughs> the prose reminds me of Frank Herbert. For you Dune fans. Um... 
but yes. Yeah, so I was uh, at the airport in Austin waiting to uh, fly home. And I decided I didn't want to knit on the plane just because I didn't feel like digging through my bag. So I was in the bookstore looking for something, looking for some, some brain candy. And um, I found this book because uh, there's apparently a movie of it coming out. And uh, I hate Michael Fassbender because he's a terrible human being. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to watch the movie. So I bought the book. The books are always better anyway. And if I, those of you from Scandinavia, if you want to tell me how to pronounce this, that would be lovely. I could Google it, but I forgot. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a detective story. Um, detective stories are, for me, are like putting on a comfortable pair of slippers. You know, there's the tropes, you know, there's the, the good person yet very flawed protagonist. Um, you know, the killer who seems impossible, you know, impossible to catch, the assorted other casts of ca cast of characters within the, you know, detective bureau, um, and then the, the, the devil is in the details, you know. What's the author going to do with these tropes to make it original? Um, so this was a lot of fun. This is not a cozy mystery. For those of you who like cozy mysteries, it's not cozy. There are multiple corpses. They're badly mutilated. You hear about that. Um, there's a good amount of sex. They're swearing. It's not a cozy mystery. So if you prefer Agatha Christie, and I'm not going to begrudge you because I do, I, I appreciate me some Agatha Christie. I inhaled her books in high school. Um, but if that's generally your cup of tea, maybe be a little wary of this. Um, but it was a good fun. And uh, I, uh, I figured out who the, who the killer was pretty early on. So I was... I was feeling very smug about that for about an hour. But yeah, it was a good yarn. So I had fun. Currently reading a, uh, a recent publication, actually. I pre-ordered this. Uh, Caitlin Doty, who is on YouTube um, at Ask a Mortician. Her second book was published and it's called From Here to Eternity. Traveling the world to find the good death. Right up my alley. Um, I'm not very far into it. Um, I'll just read you the first paragraph of the dust jacket. Fascinated by our pervasive fear of dead bodies, mortician Caitlin Doty set out to discover how other cultures care for the dead. From Here to Eternity is an immersive global journey that introduces compelling, powerful rituals almost entirely unknown in America. Um, yeah. And I'm digging it. So. Yeah. I'm only... I'm on page 45. So that's, I read the introduction and, uh, chap and chapter one. Chapter one is about um, the only open air funeral pyre um, in the West. It's in the United States. It's in Colorado, in uh, Crestone, Colorado. And it sounds lovely. If I decide to be cremated, well, no, actually, uh, you have to you have to uh, have an address in uh, the state of, in in the community in order to uh, to use their pyre. Um, but a few people have uh, 
you know, bought an acre of land, you know, to sort of like sneak it in under. So, um, so more, more to come when I, uh, when I, uh, get into this, but, um, I like it. Her, her first book I love, um, it's called Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory. Uh, it's a memoir. And it's lovely, and I highly recommend you check her out in book form and uh, here on YouTube. I will link her below. I think that's about it. Yeah. I feel like today was kind of rushed and kind of scattered, and I don't know if it's just because... I had a very busy week last week, and so my social anxiety is still kind of settling down a little bit. I had to deal with a lot of strangers, um, you know, and, and do a lot of interacting, um, very rapid fire events just, you know, with between school stuff. And um, we went to, we actually had a really nice time. Um, we went to this vegan Halloween party uh, in Delaware on uh, Saturday night, which was, it was so great for my kid to play with other vegan kids and be able to, you know, have snacks that no one has to, you know, there's no one oh, snatching them over her shoulder to inspect the label. Um, She's a really good sport about Halloween in general. Like she goes trick or treating um, with her little with her bag and her little UNICEF box, um, and we get home and we pull out all the non-vegan candy, which is most of it, usually. Um, so it was really nice to have this for her, and I hope they do it again next year because it was a lot of fun. It was draining for me, but she had a blast, so it's a win. And um, some other community stuff going on. But anyway, so if I seem a little bit harried today, that's probably why. So if you observe Halloween, I hope you have a fantastic one. Uh, tomorrow, I'm hoping for trick-or-treaters. I'm not going to hold my breath for trick-or-treaters, but I'm really hoping for a few trick-or-treaters. We're going to put Pepper outside, put the jack-o'-lantern out. Turn on the lights, all of that. Um, and then after kiddo goes to bed, that means it's time to cuddle up on the couch and watch Halloween. That's my, that is my tradition. I watch John Carpenter's Halloween every Halloween night because it is my favorite always and forever. Always and forever. So I will try to see you next month. I will try. I will do my best. Maybe I'll vlog. No promises. Maybe I'll vlog. Thank you, as always, so much for choosing to hang out with me today. I hope you have a lovely week, and um, until next time, I'll catch you around the internet, folks. <laughs>